new to me, in very nice condition, unmolested. It had 600 miles when I bought it. That's a good bar on a TR650. The reason I picked this up, I was browsing a motorcycle store in Paducah, Kentucky. They had taken this in on trade. Um, I saw it from across the room. I said, oh, the Husqvarna's coming out with a new bike, I thought. And uh, no, they uh, made this bike for a few years. Took it for a test drive, thing ran great. It had one little issue, which I'm gonna discuss. And it's been a problem with these bikes for 10 years. My plan with this bike is to take it on a thousand mile off-road loop. It's called the KAT, Kentucky Adventure Tour. Jeeps take it, there's uh, motorcycle sections. It's quite challenging. It could be six to 10 days of riding. Want every bit of comfort that we can get. We don't have a lot of time to fix the spikes. We've got priorities, which in this video here, we're gonna make a list of what we've got to do and what we'd like to do. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just take you around and show you some unique features of this motorcycle. Starting with the front of the motorcycle. Very attractive feature here. We have BMW cast wheels. Makes this thing great on the street and not so good in the dirt. The ideal front tire for a dirt motorcycle for the trip I'm about to take would be a spoked wheel with a tube type tire. This, unfortunately, this valve stem goes right into the casting. I can only use tubeless tires here. But we have a common size, 110, 80, 19. We'll have some options to put directly onto this rim. From the wheel, we haven't gotten very far and we've run into our first problem. <laughs> These shocks are non-adjustable. Just from driving 300 miles on the street, I jumped a couple of curbs and things like that. I can hear them clanging. They're, they're hitting hard on the stops. My only options are gonna be to change the fluid in here to a thicker viscosity. Maybe that'll give me a shot. And I'm gonna put uh, rubber gaiters on here to protect these fork seals. I wish that they were showers or some other more conventional uh, inverted fork, but being that they're uh, sacks, we're gonna have to kind of be careful here. This front fender while I'm at it, if once I put a knob in here, I have about a one inch clearance now between this fender and wheel. So we're gonna have to do something with this fender. I will mention that this bike came in two models. There's a Terra or Terrain and Strata Street. The fender on the Terra built for off-road is mounted up under the headlight. So we have more, more clearance between the tire. We need that now, but that bike wasn't the deal that I got. Is ABS, analog brakes. What a treat. It's selectable, so I can turn it on or off, which makes it a great street bike. Luxury brakes is what we have here, braided lines. But that's something that you wouldn't get with the Terra, so maybe that's one little plus for converting this bike into an off-road bike. Some good and bad in the back here. We have luxury components like Brembo brakes, front and rear. On this swing arm here, this is a hollow steel swing arm. If you look up front here in front of this rubber flap, when you drive in wet weather, all these will sling water and they go down to the swing arm. The swing arm will fill up with water. The thing to do is right here where I'm pointing. There's a hole drilled, it's about an eighth inch hole. Allows that water to drain out. That's on both sides of the swing arm. So this won't catch moisture. I'm lucky that this bike was done early on. The rear shock is a nice component. We're not gonna have to do anything to that. It's adjustable here and it feels good right now. We'll see what it feels like after I add all the weight of bags, et cetera, et cetera. We'll readjust that, but I feel like that's gonna be capable. These foot pegs will work just fine. They're convertible. These rubber pieces will pop out. Man, they sure are handy uh, on the street, keeping those vibrations down. But if we're gonna wear a boot or something, we'll pop those out for the trail. This shifter here is solid. So I probably will put a folding hinge on here. It's, you know, $30 maybe. And, and, and a stitch in time saves nine. So we'll do that up front before we have a problem. Moved up the bike just a little bit from the foot pegs to show you here. This is how you drain the oil in the frame. You remove that. That's our gas tank. Our gas tank is in this portion of the bike and up here is the air box, which I'll get to in just a moment. Coming around to the front of this bike, we've noticed how vulnerable the engine is down here, especially lower. We'll have to build a skid plate for this. The radiator is completely exposed. And when we change our fender location, it's gonna be even worse. We'll talk about that. We may put a rubber flap up here to protect the uh, engine, or I'll build an aluminum skid plate. I don't know, that's still to be determined. 
So we made up ditching this fender all together to allow us to have room for our rubber boots to protect the shocks. And I could raise this fender up, you know, just putting spacers here and give us more space for our knobbies. We catch a rock and throw it to the radiator though, that's gonna spoil our day. I could buy a fender for a Terra and bolt it directly on and still have these issues. So we'll get to that in the future, but uh, it's something to talk about right now and we'll put that in our plans. We can see that flashing light right now, that is our ABS light. You have to drive a few feet before that light will stop. Here is the cancel button. So while we're on the go, we can hold that for a few seconds and the light will go solid. And now we have traditional dirt bright sliding capabilities. These wide bars have a great feel. We won't have to do anything with them. We'll leave them alone. I will have to mount my navigational aids and some other things up on the handlebars. You know, we've got a lot to do, so let me just cover through it real quick. And these guards that came, they're BMW branded. I'm not sure how well they're gonna hold up, but I'm always terrified of brick and a lever, when brake lever, clutch lever, something on the trail. The fuel capacity of this bike is 3.7 gallons. That's gonna get us pretty far, definitely more than I wanna ride in a day off-road. Plenty of fuel capacity, no problem. But here's a problem. 95 octane is recommended for this engine. How, how are we gonna get that? It has some engine running issues, which I'll address in a video separately. Quite common issue, and there's actually a recall. Just to briefly explain that now, there is an air temperature sensor located inside the air box you can get to from underneath. That sensor can be fooled into thinking that this bike is in cold weather all the time. What that'll do is increase fuel ratio at all points. The negatives of that are twofold. I idled this bike in the garage that set my carbon monoxide alarm off in about two minutes, super rich and stinky. The temperature gauge on the dashboard will constantly flash if that modification has been done. I went back to stock, but now I have an issue of stalling, which is unacceptable. Apparently there's a recall where I can take the ECM, get it reflashed, and they've got that problem fixed. But right now this sucker could die on me, uh, pulling out in traffic. And sometimes you come to a stop and pull the clutch in, it'll just quit. We've got to address that. That's pr high, high, high priority for this trip. But that's why these bikes are a good deal too. So no complaints. Old brake fluid pulls moisture out of the air. If you leave that in the system for 10 years and don't change it, you're gonna have problems, corrosions on the pistons, stuck pistons. The brakes can be pre preserved, especially these high dollar Brembo brakes. You can pre preserve that by spending a few bucks on some new fluid every couple of years. So we're gonna do that. The seat has been replaced. I wish I had the original. It's a seat concept seat. And generally what they do with seat concepts is make it lower right here for shorter people. I'm not short, I'm 5'11", I'm not tall, but this bike is not tall. I wish I had the more padding. I will say, pretty comfortable bike though. I've ridden 300 miles in one trip, first day I got it. My WR250R, I played with seats for the entire time I owned it. I never could go over 50 or 60 miles without my legs falling asleep. And moving to the back, we have a flimsy luggage rack. We'll see what we can do here. Maybe just extend this platform out cheaply, or I should say economically, that's the better way to say that. Um, check out this cool stainless steel exhaust. It's twin tips off a single header. And they managed to make the Husqvarna logo in that piece of metal right there. Isn't that something? That's a cool little special touch. Italians do stuff like that. It's got to look all right. I'm gonna blow you away real quick with this uh, exhaust sound. Last little corner to show you, plastic chain guard, not thrilled. 520 chain, I believe that this is, yep, it's a 47 tooth rear sprocket. The front, I'll have to look up in the manual or y'all can do that. Look, I'm not gonna change the ratio, I've already driven it. We'll see after we put the tires on it, how it rides. Kick that can down the road, deal with it later. All right, so what a weird motorcycle. Okay, so we got a pretty good little list going and not much time to do it. So priorities number one, just recapping. The ECM and software, we've got something happening. This bike's stalling. It's too lean. 
but also um, that it's going to be difficult to find someone that will support me in getting the ECM redone. I might have to send it off to another country. These are more popular overseas. The BMW dealers don't want to deal with you. The KTM dealers don't want to deal with you. And Husqvarna is not the same company as it was in 2013. All these are just uh, difficulties, but we'll see how hard that's going to be. Priority number two or one, they're both equal. Got to have knobby tires for this trail. Absolutely have to have knobbies. So we've got to raise the front fender, put fork gaiters on there, change the front fork oil viscosity, make some sort of pan airbags, skid plate for underneath, crash bars over here. But when I drop this bike, it will get dropped. Seat cushion, uh, maybe I'll put a sheepskin on this thing. It's it's pretty comfy. There's it's slick though, so no jumping. Fold away shifter we mentioned. I need map, control, handlebar, tank bag, all that stuff up front. We'll deck that up and change this brake fluid. Yeah, there you have it. That's some of the scope of what I'm going to attempt to do here before spring and summer. A thousand mile trip, it's going to be hard enough, even with the perfect motorcycle. I would say the perfect motorcycle for what I'm going to do, it's going to be like an XR250L or a DRZ400. This bike's going to be a little big for that, but I've already got it. I don't know why I like this thing. I just, it just seems like an extremely good value. It's got some nice parts on it. I'm starting to remember when I walked in that dealership why I picked this motorcycle. I saw this power plant and thought, man, this thing would be so useful in a go-kart or <laughs> put it in a golf cart or make some sort of cycle car or something funky. You're going to find the same engine in a BMW G650 GS or an F650 GS, but they went ahead and made a few little changes. The compression ratio is 12.3 to 1. The RPM has been moved around. It makes peak power at 72.5. It makes 60 newton meters of torque at 5.75. We're up to 58 horsepower according to Wikipedia here. So, you know, anytime you do something like that, you increase power, you decrease the durability. And that is the reason to use this engine. This thing can be had for under four grand with 600 miles on it. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't try this? That's it though. I'm not spending much more money. The crash bar, skid plate, all that stuff I'm going to make in-house. There'll probably be a video on each one of these topics. So if you like this kind of stuff, if you're the other guy that has one of these, this might be helpful for you. Uh, who knows what else we'll get into, but that's an adventure. That's an adventure bike on a new adventure. Thanks for watching.